Um, I'm here with Dr. Alice Clement and um, hello Alice. Hello. Um, now you you work at uh, Flinders University. Uh, you deal with predominantly prehistoric fish. That's right. Yeah, I have my research has a focus on fish and the first tetrapods. So they're the first terrestrial vertebrates that evolve from fish. So consequently, I work on material that's around about 400 million years old because I want that time period when f fish were first really diversifying um, and yeah, when the first tetrapods evolved from them. And that's when we see the first fish coming out of the sea and that's in the Devonian? During the Devonian, yeah, we see the first limbs evolve from fins and we see fish using um, air breathing as well as gill breathing as they adapt to new environments. So it's quite a significant moment in, in the history of life. Absolutely. I believe it's the greatest step in evolution. <laughs> Spoken like a true passionate person <laughs> about their particular yes. area of research. But what we're going to do, we're going to go back though. We're going to go back in time, mm -hmm. not to the Devonian, not as far back as that. But we're going to go back in Alice time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, young Alice, um, wandering around, were you the kid that loved dinosaurs? Were you the kid that loved um, plants or animals? What, what was it that, that you look back on now and you think you can see the beginnings of this? Yeah, so I was never uh, the kid who really loved dinosaurs and I right still then. don't oh, particularly no. yeah. love them. <laughs> You know, okay. this is, <laughs> you know this is going out on Dinosaur University, don't yes, you? Yes, but they're no more special than many of the other this is diverse we, branches of life we, that we, we have. So We might concede on that. So anyway, <laughs> you, you, you weren't that kid. Yeah, I wasn't into dinosaurs, but I always loved animals and I always loved the outdoors. Um, I had parents who were very curious about nature and, and animals and, and so I think I just learned to be... I'm curious and interested about animals um, from as a young child and onwards. And so, so from that though, from 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 being curious about animals, and and lots of people are curious about animals um, and find them fascinating and wonderful and and love nature. But not everybody then becomes a fish paleontologist at Flinders University. Yeah. What kind of led to that? Sure, I actually um, didn't particularly love science. Um, in early so high you don't school. like science no, or I dinosaurs? Do. I love science. You love science now. <laughs> okay, but that's cool. And that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I think, I think um, yeah, it wasn't until I had a, a certain teacher who really sparked my interest and supported me um, that opened my eyes up to what science really is and what it can be. And so from that experience, I went on to do a science degree at university and I um, was going down the zoology and conservation path. Um, but there'd always been something in the back of my mind about wanting to look a bit more in deep time. And so a bit more about um, a longer scale evolution and the geological um, record. And I uh, spoke to someone who put me on to Professor John Long, who was then based at the Melbourne Museum. Um, and it's from there on that my love affair with fossil fish began and 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 clearly john has 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 a similar love affair with with fossil fish yeah um from from go go formation and, and, and the devonian stuff and stuff and, but it's interesting that you talk about that science teacher mm. because we we've I've spoken to a few people um and a few of them have said oh there was there was, there was this one person that yeah. helped helped make sense of, I suppose you're looking at the world and seeing all the things, and then somebody comes along and helps you, not necessarily, they're not the one that switches on the light, no. it's always you yeah. that switches on the light, but they're maybe the one that helps you to know where the light switch is. Absolutely. I think I'd obviously always been curious about science, and science is understanding the world around you, so that wasn't unusual, but I think the label of science in school, when... There were some teachers who were maybe not super uh, passionate or knowledgeable or, or perhaps it was the curriculum, I'm not sure, but it, it didn't ignite my interest in those early years until I had one who you know, really could shine that light on it in that way. So, so what is it 
so now you're 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 doing this research on on the tetrapods and the first and some research came out earlier this year on mm -hmm. on like the first hands fish fingers fish fingers right. <laughs> you research fish fingers like what a perfect job um so so what is it about and, and you, you obviously jokingly said that it's the most important time in the history of life on earth but it's clearly significant what is it about the fish that made you go that's the thing yeah well if you look at the diversity of vertebrate life today there's uh you can split it roughly in half almost there's a few outliers that are the fish that are living in the ocean and the tetrapods that are living on land and some of their descendants have returned to the water but so it's this step between the fish to the tetrapods that is um, the splitting point between two great halves of the diversity we see today so to be able to hone in and focus on that point I think is really exciting and find out what were the things that and like you did with the fish fingers paper and John and the rest of the team like what this 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 particular what was the name of the creature Elpistostegi uh, Elpistostegi because just such a fascinating and the fact that you're able to find these things yeah so it's um i'm always excited about really really beautiful fossils so i really like the 3d preserved material it's um i've been really spoiled <laughs> I, now, now speaking of 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 fossils from the sea and important moments in paleontological history that brings us because we're doing these interviews because of course um may the 21st is Mary Anning's 221st birthday mm -hmm. and we wanted to help people get a sense of her legacy and her story and share some 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 stories of some some local women in paleontology mm -hmm. so so what what did you know about her as you were growing up was she somebody that that you've gone oh that's my hero or is it something you've learned about later where does she sit personally on your journey sure. I think I probably first heard about Mary Anning uh, when I was at university and studying paleontology already. Um, and I must confess, I don't know a huge, great deal about her still. Um, but I think she is a great figure. Um, she's very iconic and a great person from history to be celebrated um, for the huge impact she's had, an ongoing impact she's had in the field. Um, yeah. She's like a, um, as, as you were talking, I'm thinking she's almost like a, uh, I don't think rallying point is the right word, but do you know what I mean? It's this, this, this moment at the beginning of, at the beginning of the science of paleontology. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so she was very active at a time and she found all these amazing specimens that, um, you know, due to her education and her gender, she wasn't able to necessarily fulfill the path she might have wanted she to. She couldn't become a professor, she no. couldn't belong to the Geological Society, and yet she persisted. Yeah, and, and she love... had all these incredible finds that are still super important today. And I do think she is the most iconic and well-known female figure of paleontology from the past. Yeah, so 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 that was, I guess, my next question. So, so a little bit about, so, so personally you knew of her later and stuff, Whereas what's really cool now is we're getting a lot of young people that are learning her story, story early. And, you know, hopefully we're helping to do part of that. But there are others out there as well mm -hmm. that are helping to, to tell her story. So, so where do you, I mean, we, you know, in, in the world of science, when people are learning about famous people in science, you know, everybody knows about Galileo, everybody knows about Einstein, everybody, a few people know about Marie Curie not as many people yet know about Mary Anning. Where, where does she sit amongst all of those people, mm. do you think? Well, and there's no right or wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, her greatest impact will no doubt be felt in the, uh, you know, for the time period of which she was discovering those fossils. So for the great marine reptiles and a lot of the invertebrates as well. Um, so for that Mesozoic chunk of time, um, yeah, and you still go to museums today and see huge ichthyosaur skeletons mounted on the wall that she may have had a part in discovering. Yeah, and even at the South Australian Museum, it's really interesting because of a lot of the stuff we find here 
in South Australia, Ammonites, plesiosaurs, big theosaurs. It's like, oh right, that's yeah. the kind of stuff she found um, yeah. at the Dorset coast and stuff. Um, I think I should let you go and we should have a cup of tea. Great. And thank you, Dr. Alice, for joining us. And um, happy birthday, Mary Anning. Happy birthday, Mary. Thank you.